welcome to Mikia. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am going to show you all uh, how I made this bag. Well, kind of. Um, <laughs> I made this bag because it was fun for me and then um, when I posted a photo of it you guys asked oh 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 yes please 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 show us how to make this so that is what this video is but it's not going to be making this bag it's going to be making another bag so uh i've watched quite a few videos i've read quite a few blog posts about how to make bags and i highly recommend doing that this is just a simple one i mean i didn't even finish off the ends of my <laughs> This is just for me, just for fun, you know. It's just got a single little pocket in there. And it's um, made from one of my paintings, which a few guys remember, uh, a rat attacked while it was still drying and totally destroyed it and I was so gutted. But I'm salvaging some beautiful parts. And so that's what I'm going to do with the next painting that I'm going to make into this bag in this video. And that's this one. Now, uh, it's been leaning up against something. It's got some stuff on it. It's also, the paint did some weird stuff here. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna cut out the bits I love and make a bag out of that. <laughs> so obviously the den black denim's not gonna work. But in one of my thrift shopping hauls, I scored this um this denim here which actually is a little bit stretchy but it's quite a thick denim and that's what you want for bag making um so we're going to use this denim for the outside and then for the inside lining i'm going to use just this little this poplin it's um just thin lining material but it's got some good structure to it it'll take a zip it'll be hopefully fine this is only my second bag I've ever made so um, so as we're gonna go along I will be giving you reasons and justifications for why I'm doing what I'm doing um, but this is by no means a categorical how to make a bag <laughs> As I say, it's my second bag ever. And um, this particular painting uh, was when I was testing the decor art pouring medium and their sealer. And it's actually still quite soft and malleable, which I feel is probably a good thing. Um, but the style I've made this bag in and I'm going to continue doing that, doesn't require the canvas to be flipped in and out or bent or anything like that. I've used a bias binding kind of method um, to just be able to keep that completely flat. Drop in the, the inner lining and keep, again bind those two together that way. In that way the painting never gets bent, never has to get flipped inside or outside and hopefully it makes it last longer. <laughs> so, uh, also, you know, constantly changing, you know me, what else is possible, how's it getting any better than that? These are my two pieces, pattern pieces, you might call them. Uh, literally, this strip is the length of the outer edge of the shape that I'm going to do my bag. As you can see, I'm doing rounded corners on this one. Um, been watching some Trini London, and she says if you've got curves, you should wear a bag with curves. So I have curves, you know. <laughs> uh, so that's the plan, and. Uh, let's get started and see how well this goes to plan. Hopefully it goes really well to plan and I will be able to share with you something that I love and um, give you some hints and tips. Pretty much this piece was designed by the fact that my wallet will be able to fit inside there 
um, as well as the thickness gives me enough depth looking down into the bag widthwise to fit all my little pouches <laughs> and glasses and things like that. So size and shape is up to you really. Okay, so first off we need to cut the painting off the um, boxing. Um, literally just using a box cutter to get that off. Sorry about it being a bit out of frame. I uh, got my angles wrong with the camera. But as you can see, it's quite malleable. I then just played around with the um, size and bearing in mind that I was going to be adding sort of a centimetre seam allowance all the way around. I realised I wanted it um, one from one side, one from the other. So I cut it in half so that they were even and uh, just clipped the paper on. And as you can see, cut a seam allowance. It's not quite as high as the pattern piece was planning. And then I just used the one I had cut to be the pattern piece exactly for the other side. It just makes sure that you get two even pieces. Um, so very little leftovers. I could make a little wallet out of the leftovers if I wanted to. And then once again, using um, using this stretch denim, um, what I really needed to do was to get a clean edge. Uh, so any woven fabric, you can just do what I just did. Make a snip and rip. And then I just took that planned width, added some couple, a centimetre either side, and then whacked it off. <laughs> ah, this is funny watching this again. Uh, so I had to do two, um, had to do some for the bias binding as well. I made this a little bit thinner and just did two lengths for the bias binding. And so then I had two lengths of bias binding, one for the middle rib and the two front and backs. Pretty much needed to do exactly the same thing again, except without the bias binding out of the lining. Um, I just cut these double with this because you know, don't need to worry about what it looks like, it's all the same color. And then again, needed to. Um, making pockets on it so this is my plan i've got one with a zip pocket and one i'm going to do so like little pouch pockets one to fit my sunglasses one to fit my phone and so the next piece is where i'm just working out how big those extra bits of material needed to be and um that is what I did next so uh, I'm not really sure what I was thinking in my head with these hand gestures <laughs> um, I am going to link in the description below uh, that's what it was um, the video that I copied to do a po uh, zip pocket uh, it's a very, very clear video and there's no point in me going through all those instructions. So this top, this pouch pocket bit, um, I cut on the fold so it was already um, folded in half. And it made it easy. You can't see that because I'm out of camera shot. Sorry, really bad camera shot work here. And... Um, Maybe I should have done this in my art studio and you would have been able to see it because I'd have been able to see what I was doing. Anyway, that's not particularly relevant to this episode. So, so I just cut this piece the same size as um, the bag piece because I know I was going to be 
making it sort of pucker up and have space for the glasses to fit in it would shrink it down a bit uh, plus also needed to do the seam allowance and turn it inside out and all that sort of thing uh, I'm, this is just working out the bit that goes in the back pocket which of course needs to be double folded and square really uh, need to <laughs> twice that's what I was saying there so once again only a single layer because it's a big long piece that gets folded up on itself and once again trying to use that cut and rip method uh, it's a lot quicker and make sure that you're cutting straight of grain one thing I might um, point out with the cut and rip method you do need to sort of readjust once you've pulled it it can pull it out of square so then if you're going to do the next one you want to sort of just straighten it back to square again and then cut and especially if you're going to cut something having already cut and ripped it so the width of this is just um, going to be a seam allowance on either side of the actual zipper tape so um, yeah my seam allowance tends to be about a centimetre wide or three eighths of an inch so up to you how you do that and then so that's how it will go in it'll get folded down just like that just like that how's it getting easier all right so this is where i start fiddling with how long do i need my straps to be um pretty much just used my tape measure to get me a measure of that realize that that's not going to be quite enough so um gave myself a bit more that would be long enough so that's how long we need to be i think it was about 54 inches 55 inches i think somewhere around there and when you and that also kept it so that when it folded up like this um it stayed within the bag didn't go over that um so pretty much i went from i, I, I tore off the side a salvage edge um it was needed to be longer than the width of the fabric was so i just tore down one salvage which as you'll see a bit later on worked to my advantage so at this point all the pieces that i had was two um outside painting pieces if i did this again i would probably put some sort of stiffening in there maybe stick some cardboard on the back of the painting or something but it's not not bad um two inner lining pieces and then we'll need a two pocket pe pocket bits so that's the pouch pocket and the uh, zipper pocket piece both of which will be um fused what do you call that interline inter interfaced that's the word <laughs> at a later stage um you'll get to see that soon that's our outer strip and i realized later on that i had forgotten to cut an inner strip so uh, i had been thinking about putting a zipper across the opening of it and that's what that piece was going to be for but uh no i'm not going to do that anymore and then here comes our bits of bias binding and uh, two lengths of that and that I think is all I cut at this point the rest of it gets cut when I suddenly remember I've missed bits oh no and then there's a strap Ta -da! so uh, I've come to my ironing board and uh, I got out my bias tape maker which comes in a kit um, and if you would like the link let me know and I can give you that or maybe I'll even remember to put it in the link in the description below but um, 
got it on Amazon, but it's really not designed for such thick fabric because it's got to get two layers out of there. One on either side. Can you see that little blue bit inside? It's got to have one on either side of that. So it's not going to fit. So what I did instead was just folded um, and pinned these into the middle and gave that a good press. Get rid of the pins and just steam so that you get an end. Oh, that didn't work. Look at that. It went wonky. Okay. And then I drew on a piece of cardboard a hole that that would fit through. And oh, drew and cut out, obviously. <laughs> um, and then fed it through the other way. Fed that through. And then you just sort of, it gives you a guide for your bias tape making. And you can do this with any size material, but definitely those bias makers do not work. Um, and then you can just sort of pull it down a bit squiggle down make sure it's coming through evenly get your fingers out of the way if you're going to use steam and just keep going so these were the two strips that um, just gives you that guide so pull it through make sure they've come through evenly do the next bit okay Just like that. Using bias tape is actually not the way I did the first bag, but it's the way I want to do the second bag, so it's the way I'm showing you. <laughs> so you keep doing that until you get all the way to the end, and you end up with a piece. Get that one out of the way, like this one, which has been done all the way to the end. And then um, it makes sewing that on just that so much easier because you just fold it over the edges and put a row of stitching. Just like that. Alright, I'm going to finish this other one back soon. Okay, so the next piece I'm doing on the ironing board is the strap. And this beautiful little selvage is actually helping me quite well because it's folded itself the selvage has folded itself in I don't need to do anything with that and all I'm going to do is fold it so that that folded piece wraps round and sits so you've basically got if I can show you here here's the selvage folded on itself to give a clean edge here and then the other side is brought across so that it's, technically it's it's in a three but it's kind of a four on this side where that selvage has been folded over um, and I'm just going to again run the iron down that just to steam it to keep it there um, I might even feed it through maybe not no oh no I'm just going to do it by hand I'm just going to go right the way down that whole 50 odd inch um, piece and steam that shut and then all I need to do for it is to run a line of stitching either side and that will be our strap done so next <laughs> so it was about at this time <laughs> that I realized that um, I had not cut a couple of bits that I had planned to cut first off was the uh ins the the joining wall between the front and the back of the lining so i just grabbed the outside one and used it as a pattern cut another piece 
easy peasy and the other thing I wanted to do was to put um, a couple of pockets into that so uh, on the if you think on the inside of the walls um, a pocket on either end just to create uh, you know something to pop oh, my what I want to use it for is to put the uh, shopping bags into I've got a little a couple of little really small folding shopping ba bags that are great so this is about how much space they need to be but I don't want it sitting out like that all the time uh, and I was thinking, oh, how, how can I do that? And I thought, well, if I get a little bit of elastic and make the elastic just a bit bigger than that, so there's, so you can get your finger in and stretch it and put that in there, when I sew it in, it will concertina it up and give a little anyway I'll show you when I make it <laughs> so literally I went across there and then bunched it up a little bit so it stood out and get your finger in to pull it open and cut two of those one for each pocket all right so um and now on to the next bit so in the video that I've linked in the description on how to do the pockets, um, the zip pockets, she talks about putting interfacing on your pocket bag. So that was the next step. I just grabbed this uh, interfacing, pop the pocket bag down flat. And then trimmed it off it's really simple doing it that way it's how I do most of my interfacing um, means I don't have to go get too precious about getting it lined up so there we have our pocket bag ready yay and I just lined one side of the um, pouch pocket and again just interfaced and then cut it out. Sweet. Easy peasy and squeezy. Alright. Next. What else is possible? How much more fun can we have? <gasps> Alright, so this is just me giving you a really super quick um, view of what I did. There's roughly an inch on either end of the actual zip. To the edge of the pocket bag and then another inch out to the outside of the bag uh, check the link in the description for the video on how to do this i'm just speeding through it just so that you see that i did actually do it but full instructions on how to do all of this is in that video by that amazing amazing other person uh, whose name i can't remember yet but you know it'll be down there for you to watch <laughs> um, so you sew around the rectangle cut it open flip everything to the ins other side under stitch the seam to the pocket bag then um, put the zip behind it stitch around it with a zipper foot really really easy if you know what you're doing maybe in my first pocket bag zip pocket thing that I've ever done so I was quite pleased with the way that turned out especially when I didn't iron it <laughs> and then you fold your pocket bag up and sew around it's really easy but that's the short version and then I realized I'd done it too long so I 
sewed a little curve to match the bag and trimmed it off just so that we didn't have the pocket doing weird things inside the bag. So that was that done and on to the next one which um, first thing I needed to do once I had finished tutuing around was to sew the, it inside out leaving a small patch underneath at the bottom to turn it back the right way just to give nice clean edges all the way around and um, so I'll go around part way stop at the bottom where it's flat and then start again and do the other side so I can then flip it back through so here we have it I've sewn round it and then I'm just going to cut out some notches so that when I flip it back through uh, it doesn't bunch up weird and funny and it sits uh, a lot flatter than it would have done this is a standard sewing technique when it's called clipping the curves <laughs> anyway I did that on both corners um, and then flipped it back through to the other side and there we have it in an ideal world you would then iron that but you know I'm not the most <laughs> diligent seamstress when it comes to ironing and um, if I can try and avoid it I will so there it is it's pinned on as you can see though that sewing around the edge has definitely shortened it and then left some space for the pockets to pucker and surprise surprise added bonus we've got a glasses cleaning cloth uh, that is sewn into my bag how cool is that how many people have ever thought of doing that wished they had one well I can't lose it now unless I lose my handbag how's it getting any better so gone right round sewn all the edges sewn up the middle to differentiate the glasses pocket and the phone pocket and uh, that side is ready to go too so now to start putting all the big pieces together I think let's get on to the next bit straps straps is important so I basically took it how I'd ironed it and put a seam up either side and that was the straps um probably could have done something with the ends but I didn't um <laughs> so I folded each of the middle uh, the side pieces in half to find the middle at the bottom put a pin there folded the strip in half and put a pin in the middle on either side of that one and then I was able to match up those middle pieces with the middle pieces <laughs> does this make any sense to you I hope so and then pinned either way from that middle pin um, what I realized was I had measured the length of that middle piece on the outside edge not along the um, seam line so my two outside pieces actually ended up a little bit bigger than they needed the spine pieces ended up bigger than they needed to be but that was okay I did remember to put my pouch pockets in though just before I started to sew I was like oh, oops need to put that in so I chose to put those in in line with the other pouch pockets um, whipped a quick seam across the top where it folded over and as much as it would have been really easy just to slide that in it was not going to work <laughs> because it's got a stretch somehow it's not as long as the pocket that's the whole point of putting the elastic in there so little safety pin trick hopefully all of you know how to do that by now um, 
and took it through and so that I didn't lose the end I put a pin in the end once it got to see nearly lost it and then that just stretches it up and we are good to go pin it on uh, it was at this point that I realized I hadn't done anything about sealing the bottom piece and uh, so literally I just sewed a line across the bottom and then so that just shortened it up enough So there we go, we've got that on there um, and I just gathered the bottom up a little bit just to make sure that it fitted. <laughs> Next bit, sew the sides on, of course I did it the same pocket on the other side as well. So when I was sewing the um, the painting, I found that it did not um, feed through the painting on the sewing machine or the painting on the zipper foot. So I put not the zipper foot. So I put some paper underneath to help it feed, and then just was able to tear that paper off um, once I'd done the stitching, and that allowed it to feed through the feed dogs of the sewing machine and um, I just tacked it together I realized it was going to be quite a mission to try and attach around the corners and stuff like that straight with the bias tape so I did a an initial sew line and then um, drop in the lining Dun, dun, dun. start to feel like a real bag now it's quite exciting and um, then obviously gonna need to attach that I did also end up doing a bit of a stitch line across the top of there as well um, especially once I remembered that I was going to need to put my little um, doohickeys uh, what are they called d-rings no not quite d-rings actually they're rectangular rings so the side of the outside came up and was had plenty to roll over and seal the edge of the um, the lining in the main compartment like on the side what would you call that the backbone the joining bit the yeah the joining bit <laughs> I don't know they've probably got the official name if you know the official name please put it in the comments below but it just folded over and biased itself there and here I'm showing you how I finished the top of the bias off um, I chose to put the bias start and finish on one of the sides corners corner of the side that way if it's it's not got a lumpy bit in the bottom that could cause it to fall off um, and it also isn't ugly on the top as well so 
that's so that's what I'm saying here <laughs> it's not lumpy on the bottom or ugly on the top put it on that side corner and um, so I didn't bother trying to measure it out and get it right to a pattern I just put the bias on and then cut it off the bit I didn't need and then I was able to uh, fold the top over and fiddle it around a bit folded it over and sewed around took a little bit of getting the tension right so I really highly recommend doing some practices on some spare bits to get your tensions right like at that point we had one two three four five six sorry two four six eight ten twelve thirteen layers of denim and a layer of painting at that that folded over end part so <laughs> So then the next bit was to put my little toggles for the, what's it to put, what's it, what's it called, strap to go through. Can you see why I don't do sewing videos? I'm a painter, guys. <laughs> this is not my jam. <laughs> um, but I did enjoy making the bag. And um, so then... There we have it. We have the edging done. Probably could have been a more professional job. Uh, I'm not a sewer by trade. So please do not diss me in the comments. Um, I do need to hand stitch that bit. I missed it, but that's okay. It's easy to just do a little bit of hand stitching. Then go around and do the other side. Um, one thing I did work out as I was putting the bias tape on is those top corners shouldn't be right angles. Um, and I'll show you in a minute that I cut those just slightly rounded. And what I worked, I only had two of those D-ring things. So I ended up making some little straps out of some leftover uh, denim just folded them over so three ways zigzagged across them and then put them on to as little lugs after I had put the bias tape on uh, I'm sure you could come up with lots of different ideas on how this could be done and if you do have any suggestions pop them in the uh, comments below as I say second bag ever so if you have suggestions please do pipe in and let those that are watching know any additional ideas that you have so the second one round I made it easier on myself I actually stitched the two sides of the bias binding down so then I only had to try and fold it over once rather than keeping the two sides tucked in and folding it over so this is what I meant before by cutting off that just that really sharp bit of the corner just help the bias binding go round with a little bit more ease um, choo -choo -choo. and then I put the bias tape on so time to party it's interesting both sides on one one side of the bag both the bits got dropped and on the other side of the bag both those top bits got caught in so off we go again these clips are brilliant for this sort of thing there's no way I could have done this with pins um, so here it is almost finished there's those little lugs that I told you I was going to put on 
again not a professional job this is for me to use um, if I'd had more of those then this would have been I would have put them there but I didn't have them everything I've got here is out of my stash guys I, the buttons the denim the painting I didn't go out and buy any of this this is just all out of my stash so I'm going to put a button on the end of each end of that and two buttonholes so this was just me showing you how I worked out where the buttonholes were pinned them and just to make sure that they were going to be in the right place and did this did them identical on both sides so that they kind of vaguely had some symmetry <laughs> And then um, the next bit that's um, what how do I work out how to do how big the buttonhole should be? I did a test buttonhole on a leftover scrap of the strap and um, it fit the button so that then I just measured that up against where I wanted it to go and I put a pin on the outer edge of where the sewing needed to start and stop so that when I was doing my button holding I put the needle down at the first one stitched down to the second one stopped came back again and they were perfect all four of them I was very proud <laughs> so there we go and time to show you the end result I think there it is it's got its button on done one side got its button on and there's this other buttonhole to again get it out that's pretty tight but that's a good thing feed it back down and put it through the other buttonhole just like that straps lengthened okay How's it getting any easier than that? So let's have a look if it fits everything. Ta da! Completed bag. Opens up with ease. And there's my self painted wallet, my self painted bits bag, <laughs> my. Um, shopping bag in one side another shopping bag in the other side we should have a whole heap of pens and lipsticks and things into the zipper pocket it holds a lot guys it's great and the zip even does up I'm so proud <laughs> and then we've got the phone going in the phone pocket it only just fits, by the way. It's a bit should needs to be a bit taller. And there's my sunglasses. Clean them off. Put them back in their bag. And then by just by picking up the handle, it tightens the bag up and closes it. Just like that. So I'm gonna take you outside now and show the different ways of wearing it. Look, it's one of my paintings on my shirt. How does it get any better than that? A painted bag, a painted shirt. Dun, dun, dun. So, shoulder bag length. There we go. And then, it's not a quick and simple process to change this. Um, you know, if you had the standard bag length and strap length and thingies, it'd probably be a lot quicker. But, uh, don't do this 
standing around because your phone drops out. <laughs> oh, maybe I should have put that zip on. Anyway, there's the straps. And you can put it on my back so that I've got all my hands free if I am going through a um, airport or something and picking up grandchildren when they arrive in a few hundred years time. Um, and it, when those straps are longer, it's actually no longer a handbag, it becomes a crossbody bag or a, a long hanging shoulder bag. Ta-da! How's it get any better than that? Alright guys, thank you so much for joining me. I had fun making the bag. I hope you've enjoyed me making it and thanks again to all my amazing patrons and uh, all of you who support me by watching my channel. I adore you all. Have fun and back to painting in the next video. Bye bye!